This game is not suitable for children. It contains themes of abuse and violence. Please do not play if you're below the age of 18. Hello everybody, my name is Lionel and welcome to Lil Fern. This is a game where you play as the victim of abuse and you meet up someone who says that they could help you out at a gas station. How does this gonna go? Let's find out. <clears throat> I'm at the gas station to pick up some much needed snacks. There's been a few too many snackless nights recently. I've been working my butt off researching a dream job of what I go to college for. Recently though, my motivation is at an all time low. I had a huge fight with my partner. They're really making life more difficult for me. But whatever. Right now, I'm all about the snacks. I make my way through all the aisles to the selection of snacks, but looking over, I can't find the ones I like. Ugh, seriously, can my life get any more annoying? Hey there, looking for something? I turn to face the voice, assuming it's someone who works here. But to my surprise, it doesn't seem like it. That's a strong reaction at 1am at a Bill Mart. The stranger seems amused and gives me a gentle smile. He seems nice, but I can't trust their honesty. If I did, I'd probably be dead by now. As soon as he starts showing any sort of major red flags, I'm out of here. Uh, yeah, no, they're just out of my favorite snack is all. They'll just come back another time. Oh, I grabbed the last one actually. These? <gasps> of course he grabbed the last bag. Seriously? Ah, yeah, those. Don't worry about it. You got them first. Enjoy him. You can have him. It's not dire or anything. Promise. I look at him suspiciously. This reeks of risk, but I'm polite enough about it. I don't think a snack is worth this. It's all good. I think I'll just head out. Thanks for the offer, though. I turn and start heading out the door. I pay close attention to the sounds around me, but it doesn't seem like he's following. I think I'm good then. Whew. Yeah, after getting into my car, I turn on the ignition and sit for a moment, trying to collect my thoughts before driving home. I didn't end up getting any snacks. I just didn't feel like socializing like that. Oh well, I'll come back another day. Wait, wait, what are you doing in my car? Yo, my dude! The door opens and the same guy from inside sits casually in my passenger seat. Hello? Why the? Hang on, hang on, I just wanted to give you these. It's a plastic bag with the snack he had earlier in it. Okay, but why are you in my car? I want to talk to you again. He smiles again with that really gentle expression. Why does he look so friendly? Something about his demeanor is so calm. That paired with his behavior is confusing. Uh... Why in my car though? Couldn't you just knock on my window? Or can you please get out of my car? You know, I will just question it. I will not be rude, I will question it. I guess so. It just seemed nicer in here with you. This guy is really strange. And him jumping in here is seriously creeping me out. I can't get angry though. He doesn't seem like a threat whatsoever. I can't explain it. I know I shouldn't trust him because of that, but I know something about how he makes me feel. I feel safe. Uh, sure. Well, thank you for the stack, but I need to get home. I I need sleep. Sleep. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Oh, before I go, can I ask you a favor? Oh, here it comes. He's gonna ask for money or drugs or be weird. I should prepare for. Can we hang out sometime? It can be anywhere public. No strings attached. You just seem really sweet. Hang out? He even exaggerated the public part to make sure I heard it. What is this sorcery? He doesn't come across as scary or creepy in this light. What do you mean he doesn't come off as creepy or scary? He's in your car. He's in your damn car. There's a stranger in your car. I mean, usually I'd be okay with this, but there's a stranger in your car. I mean, his actions should paint a clear picture, but somehow... He's so calm and cheerful. Well, if this is a tactic, it works. <sighs> Am I actually going to consider this? Plus, my partner is going to get angry if they find out. Yeah, hey, screw it. It's my life. You know what? Screw it. Uh, how about the park? Picnic area at 12 p.m. Your game? His face immediately lights up like the Christmas tree. His eyes are quite literally glistening and his smile. Are those dimples? Yes, yes, yes. That works perfectly. I'll see you there then. He jumps out of the car and shuts the door. I'll see you there, Lil Fern. The smell irritates me in the best way possible, and I'm not sure how to feel about it. He walks away and out of my view. Welp, I know what just happened, but you know what? It's something exciting. Which is better than just sitting at home all day and trying and failing to do anything else. I just realized I never got his name. I pull out of the parking lot 
We're getting a short ride home. I didn't think about much as I drove down the near empty road. The passing glow of street lamps illuminating the interior of my car. After I get into my apartment and lock the door, I quickly start to make my way into my room. I notice my partner sleeping on a couch per usual. I watch my steps carefully and settle my breathing. I definitely don't want to wake them up. I know how that would end up. Knowing them, they'll get up in a while and go outside to smoke then come back and sleep on the couch again. Ugh. Tonight was weird. I set the bag with some snacks down and ponder for a moment if I should eat anything. Honestly, no, I just want to sleep. I lean down and turn the lamp off. After letting out a gentle sigh, I kick my shoes off and crawl into bed. The cold sheets touch my exhausted body. I instantly feel at ease. My body relaxes more as I rest my head on my worn pillows. As I wind down, I recap the night. Not much happened during the day. Nothing notable, at least. I think about the guy at Bill Mart. What if I had said something else? What if I never went in the first place? My eyelids start to feel heavy as I stay in deep thought. If I'm being honest, I'm excited deep down. Maybe. Mmm. I blink a few times at the light pouring into my room. It's blinding. I really need curtains. I sit up and throw my legs off the side of the bed, rubbing my eyes. Gazing at my clock for a moment, I notice the time. Huh, 12 p.m. I mean, yeah, I did stay up late last night. Oh, poo! I practically launched myself out of bed towards the closet. I search through my clothes frantically for something to wear. I quickly pick a jacket, shirt, pants, and some shoes. I think this is the quickest I've ever put on clothes. I bet I could win a competition with this kind of speed. I quickly grab the bag with the snack from last night and hurry out of my room. I grab my wallet, phone, and keys before I head out. After shutting the door to my apartment and lock it, I check the time on my phone. Ah, poo. It's 12.10 now. I'm officially late. Usually, I wouldn't care about not being on time, but this situation somehow feels worse than anything else. I sprint over to the elevator, press the button over and over impatiently. Come on. After getting down to the car park, I run to my car. My eyes meet a few other residents, which makes me slow down a bit out of embarrassment. I fumble with my keys to get into my car. I try to look a bit less rushed to avoid stairs. After I'm inside, however, I waste no time in turning on the ignition and nearly speeding to the park. After I park my car, I grab my things and jump out, hurrying to the picnic area. I quickly scan the place, looking for someone who looks even remotely like him. Ah, poo, I don't see him anywhere. Of course, it's just my luck. He probably got impatient and left before I could show up. I'm such a butthole. Boo! Yeah! He quickly spin around and nearly fell backwards at how close he is to me. My heart's racing. I take a few steps back to get space between us. Jesus, you scared the poo out of me! I grabbed the clothing on my chest and tried to steady my breathing. I'm sorry, I didn't think I'd scare you that badly. Are you okay, little fern? I nod, still trying to reorganize my thoughts. I'm alright now. By the way, I never got your name. He pauses for a second before chuckling a bit. Yeah, you're right. I'm Sawyer. Nice to meet you. Again. I love that name. My name's, uh, I know. Oh. Is that the snack from last night? He points to the bag I'm holding. I take a second to process what he just said, but immediately got distracted by his question. Yeah, this is it. I woke up a little late. I didn't have time to eat anything. Let me get you something from one of the food stands. My treat. What is with this guy and buying me things? I'm pretty sure I know what he's trying to do here, but hey, free food if nothing else. Wait, should I tell him I'm taken? Oh gosh. I want to mention that I'm seeing someone just in case you had something in mind. What do you mean? Ah, poo. That confirms it then. I'm just dating someone. It's not ideal though, I'll say. Ah, you don't have to worry about them anymore. What do you mean? Sawyer? What do you mean? Can you tell me what you mean by that? His small falters a bit before he turns his attention to something else. Hey, you think they have good fries over there? I keep my eyes locked on him, not even humoring his attempt to dodge the question. Uh just hated seeing you get hurt every single day. I take a few steps back away from him, trying to process what he's saying. Before he starts speaking again, I pull out my phone, which I hadn't checked since I woke up. I keep glancing at him, feeling my throat tighten up. I turn on my phone and notice a new message from my partner. It's from earlier this morning. I glance back up at Sawyer. His face looks almost proud, smug. My dude! My dude! What did you do? Confused, I look back at my phone and tap the notification. My dude! My dude! <laughs> Holy poo! There, 
There! Zarya gently pushes the phone down, covering the screen up a bit. My eyes begin to water. My mind is drawing a blank on how to feel or how to think. I know what they did to you. How they made you feel. I know what it's like. I used to know how hard it is to get out of those situations, so I took care of it for you. I promise, sweet Fern. I won't let anyone hurt you ever again. My dude! I gaze back up at him. His eyes meet mine. He looks sympathetic. What did you do? I just gave them some advice last night. He looks proud of himself again. I don't know how to feel about this. He's comforting me and it feels good. What do you mean it feels good? I mean, I can guess what he did. He hurt them. Um, am I going to see them again? Where am I gonna go? Sawyer reaches over to caress my cheek gently. I couldn't stop it. I was frozen. I promise. It'll be okay. I even have somewhere for you to stay, little fern. Uh, King, like, guys, guys, you know that I would straight up go for the feral option, but there's no feral option here. It's either like, oh, suddenly, like, oh, yeah, as long as I'm safe, or no, you're a murderer, aren't you? What? <laughs> okay, no, you're a murderer, aren't you? A murderer? I suppose by definition, yeah. By definition, he says. Finally, hurt those who hurt you. I know what it's like. I don't want to see you get damaged like me. Yeah, you are damaged. You still shouldn't kill people over that. I don't just kill them, Firm. I show them the damage. I give them a taste of their own medicine. I make sure they understand just how disgusting they are to treat people like us like that. You're insane! Maybe so, but isn't this better than killing for no reason? I slowly back away from him. I feel my body shaking. My legs want to give out. This wasn't safe. He isn't safe. Why? Even after all this, he still gives me a feeling of comfort, of safety. I look him in the eyes one more time. He looks sad. He smiles gently, acting like he understood my decision. I turn around and walk away, holding myself tightly. I don't think I'll report him. I'm glad that butthole is gone. I'll figure it out myself. What happens next in your journey with Sawyer? Did you run to him again? Did you go looking for him? You get to decide what happens. Explore the mediums of telling the story you make with him. And most importantly, have fun, little fern. Okay, uh, let's just get back into it and, uh, see what some of the other endings are. Okay, you know what, Sawyer? I'll do anything, and I really mean anything for the bag of snacks. I'm dead serious. I'll do anything for the bag. Today has been hard enough. I need them. Can we go on? Absolutely, I will go on a date with you. You... I have a partner, but he's been a butthole for too long for me to give a poo. Where are we going? He stares in complete shock before a smile slowly stretches across his face. His eyes seem to light up too. I'll take you to my favorite hiking trail then. Sounds good. You know what? Come pick me up in the morning too. What's your name? Before I begin to answer, I pull out my phone and navigate to the contacts. I'm Sawyer. Cool. Here, put your number in my phone. I'll text you when I'm ready in the morning. I'm honestly just ready for my life to pick up. My partner is stressing me out and my apartment doesn't even feel safe anymore. Who knows who this guy is, but he doesn't feel off to me in any way. As soon as I start to have my phone to him, he grabs it to input his number. He's smiling harder than I thought was humanly possible. He hands my phone back and starts bouncing on his heels. He seems genuinely excited and giddy. I bet this could be fun. Let me go buy these for you, before I can interject. He was already almost at the register purchasing the snack. I watch him as he does this. His little mannerism and movements are kind of endearing. He walks to the exit and waits for me, so I make my way over to meet him. Here you go, little fern. Enjoy him. Thank you. So I'll text you. Got it? He nods very enthusiastically. Got it. I leave the gas station and give Sawyer a little wave before heading to my car. After hopping in, I let out a sigh. I think about what just happened. Whatever happens, it'll be better than what I've been doing. I turn on the ignition and head home. I think about Sawyer the whole way. Once I arrive, I get to my apartment. I toss my keys onto the counter. Suddenly, I hear groaning and shuffling from the couch. Oh, poo, they were asleep. Where? Where the heck did you come from? I choked down a laugh at their confusion. I just went for a snack run. A snack run? Why? Because I needed snacks? Stupid butthole. Ha! I'm a stupid butthole. Look at you. Do you know how stressed you've been making me? I place the other things I had on counter and take a step closer to it, throwing my hands up in the air. I am trying my best to figure out my life. What I want to do, and you sit there and berate me for existing. They begin to get up, but I continue before they can somehow shut me up. 
If you despise me so much, why don't you just leave? Why sit here and torture yourself in my sheer existence? They rush towards me and grab my wrist, yanking me, and I stumble closer to them. You are lucky to be with me. I'm the one paying for your shelter and food. With your dad's money. Yeah. And he's yelling at me constantly part of the package. How about crossing way too many boundaries that I've been very clear about? I'm yanked again. This time I lose my balance and fall to the floor. They drag me to the bedroom by my arm. My elbows burn as it pulls my entire weight. You're freaking pathetic. Go to sleep. We'll talk in the morning. I'm too tired for this poo. He slammed the door in my face. You've been asleep all night. I just want someone to take me away from here. I crawl over to my lamp and switch it off. Carefully, I make my way into bed. For a bit, I think about Sawyer, his face. Honestly, think about it now, how Sawyer looked at me. He just had this look in his eyes. As if he knew what I'm going through. Empathy and safety. The more I remember his face, the more friendly he seems. I can't wait to see him again. Again. Thump. Thump, thump. Shatter. My eyes shoot open and loud noises coming from outside the bedroom. What is going on? Out of panic, I quickly launch myself out of bed and swing the door open. Immediately, fear and panic shoot through my body as I watch the chaos unfold in front of me. Get the heck out! You think I'm gonna listen to you? I watch as Sawyer throws the phone straight at my partner's head. Oh, that's badass. I hear the audible thunk as the corner hits him straight in the forehead. Ah, poo! What? Ah, hello, little Furt. Me and Sawyer's eyes meet. His face is that same calm and safe one from last night. And immediately falls back to intense when he looks back at my partner. Hey, who is this guy? Well, this is the guy who's gonna get rid of your golf ball face, a hole. He stammer, grasping at their head, which was bleeding now. I stay frozen, not knowing how to respond. Honestly, though, it's satisfying seeing my partner get beat up in a way. Give me one minute. We'll leave for a date soon. Oh, damn! I watch as Sawyer sprints and full force punches him in the face. I flinch at the impact. They fall back, knocked out. Sawyer rolls his shoulder, stretching his arms. Ready to head out, love? He walks over to the door and leans against the wall, waiting patiently as if nothing just happened. Yeah, let me just get ready. I quickly dip into the bedroom and throw on my favorite outfit. I grab a bag and put some of my things into it. Wallet, keys, phones, a few small sentimental items, and ah, obviously a snack. Well, here we go, I guess. Ready? Sawyer walks over to me and gently grabs my wrist. I expect him to pull me like I'm used to, but to my surprise, he doesn't. He waits until I start walking to lead me. We walk down to the car park and make our way through it. I try to make my way to the car, but I'm tugged away by Sawyer's hand. I guess he has his own car. Oh my god, that's a badass bike! To my surprise, we end up next to a motorcycle. A forest green one with little vinyl stickers of nature themed things stuck to the smooth surfaces. It looks like it has a box apartment on the back that could possibly fit two helmets. This is yours? Yep, I don't ride often, but I figured it might impress you. I mean, he isn't wrong. I am impressed. It's a sick looking bike. He locks the compartment with a small key and pulls out a couple helmets. After handing one to me, he puts on his. Get ready for adventure! He beams through his visors and I can't help but chuckle in excitement at the whole idea. I quickly put on my helmet, struggling to adjust the strap with all my adrenaline. We hop onto the motorcycle. I wrap my arms around his waist as he backs out. He glances back at me for confirmation that I'm ready. I nod, and we're off. Aww. Oh, heck yeah! Honestly, if you had told me yesterday that I'd be riding on the back of a motorcycle clinging to a guy I met literally hours ago, I would have said screw off with that. I'm definitely never going back. I don't care anymore. I don't even care if I never grab anything else from that apartment. I have everything I need. I'm excited to see where this road takes me. Ending one. My god, that was so freaking satisfying. It was amazing seeing Sawyer like beat up that Peter looking a-hole. <laughs> Oh god, but we still got three more endings to get through, so hey, let's get back into it, shall we? Alright, so you're, you're here and me with my car, so can you please get out of my car? I don't want you in my car. Get out of my car. Oh, I didn't mean to intrude. Yeah, I'll go. Wait, before I go, can... No. I knew it. There's always a catch. I decided it's best to cut this short instead of humoring it. Whatever you're about to say, just no. Please, get out of my car. I'm leaving. 
Thank you for the snacks. You didn't need to do that, but I just want to go home and sleep. He broke his eye contact with me to look away. His expression fell. The light in his eyes dimmed. He climbs out of the car, defeatedly. After shutting the door, he glances at me one more time, his head hanging low before he walks away. Ah, Pooh. It kind of made me feel bad. Well, I was about to get wrapped up in a problem. I have enough of those. I pull out of the parking lot, gaze it back occasionally to see if any cars are following me. I drive home with extra paranoia, wondering what else could happen after that weird encounter. I sleepily stumble into my apartment and shut the door, remembering to lock it this time. With a deep sigh, I set the bag with a single snack on the counter. I realize the rattling from the bag woke up my partner when I hear them groan. Ah, oh, poo. I didn't realize they were asleep. Ugh! What the- Sorry, my bad. Let's go back to sleep. I start towards the bedroom. I watch as they rub their face groggily. I can tell they're pissed. I pick up my speed, hoping to get in before they could do anything. They push their hands against the door before I can close it. Ah, damn. Here we go. Hang on. Where were you? It's getting snacks. I literally told you before I left. You didn't tell me anything. Why are you lying? I'm not lying. Can you please go to bed? Tell me exactly where. Why? What's the deal with you? I was just at the gap. Suddenly, their hand catches the collar of my shirt, yanking me forward. The force slams my head against the door that's half open. Now, What the heck? They walk away, chuckling to themselves. Going after smoke. Oh, I wish I could murder that guy on myself. But damn, watching Lysoria deal with it. Why did I say no? Ah, it's for the endings. It's just to get all the endings. That's all I'm doing this for. Yeah, screw off. I slammed the door shut and gulped down a scream. I hate them so much. I'm ready to ditch them and go anywhere else. I don't think I'll ever be able to. I have nowhere to go and they'd definitely be the type to kick me out or even hurt me if I just broke it off. I reach over and turn off my lamp. The irritated force of my hand bumps into the lampshade when I pull it back, making it nearly fly off. Ah, oh, damn. I could throw something right now. I force a loud sigh and collapse onto the bed. After a moment, I scream into my pillow. I just want to sleep. I go to the park tomorrow and walk around. The trees, the beautiful flower beds with the info cards that I could read endlessly. It's a good place to go to just de-stress. Yeah, I have that at least. Ugh, my head hurts. Alright, that's why. The sun is really bright today. My room is glowing. It hurts my eyes. What time is it? I glance over at my bedside clock, noticing it's 12 p.m. Huh. Did you tell my partner I'm leaving for the park? I'll just grab lunch. Uh, breakfast? Yeah, I'll just grab something there. I pull myself out of bed and shuffle to the closet. I pick out a decent outfit. Nothing fancy. Today feels like a lazy day. I slip on my walking shoes, grab my things, and leave my room. I look around a small apartment for my partner, but they don't seem to be here. Ah, uh, whatever. If they ask, I'll just show them a picture or something for proof. I leave my apartment and lock the door. I pause for a moment. It's a little strange that they're not here. Yeah, maybe they screwed up. I decide to just enjoy the silence as I head to the elevator. After getting down to the car park, I leave the elevator and make my way over to my car. I get in and shut the door, letting out a big sigh. I really just need a break from everything. I turn on the ignition and head down to the park, take my time and enjoy the passing scenery. I find a parking spot and hop out of my car. I immediately head for the picnic area. I take in the fresh air and the tweets of the birds as I walk. Yeah, this is nice. I glance at the flowers along the path. A bush covered in round bunches of blue flowers jumps out at me. I can already smell them from over here. I lean in and take a whiff. An almost overwhelming sense of honey hit me. A little too strong for me. Those are the California lilacs. We- well- Ack! I jump back, catching my heels on the pebbles that separate the path and the flower beds. I'm quickly caught by my shirt and pulled back upright. Careful! You okay? I'm glad I caught you. Is the guy from last night? Jesus! Yeah, I guess so. I mean, I wouldn't have almost ate it if you hadn't scared me. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. God damn it, my shit's gonna be all stretched out now. Thanks for that. The guy went from looking like he felt bad to the happiest thing around. Oh, I never told you my name last night. The Sawyer. Okay, I didn't really care, but thank you. What are you doing here anyway? I came here to unwind sometimes. I saw you from over there. I remember you from last night. He points to a bench under a huge oak tree with long branches. It seems ancient. 
It looks like a pretty nice place to sit. I can see why he chose it. Yeah. Promise you're not stalking me? Yeah. The thought crossed my mind, but coincidences do happen, so I can't accuse him of anything yet. Yeah, of course not. I live nearby here, so this is a place I visit regularly. What about you? To be honest, I just needed some fresh air. He frowns for a second and starts digging in his hoodie pocket. Listen, um, I'm hungry and I just want to be alone, so do you mind? He pauses from digging and looks up at me, smiling softly. Of course, but take this before you go. He hands me a small jewelry box covered in a soft black velvet. It's decorated with a thin gold ribbon. It looks like something is rattling inside. Don't open it yet, okay? Wait until after you eat. He turns and walks away, tucking his hands into his pockets. Yeah, this isn't suspicious at all, but I'll humor him, I guess. I walk over to one of my favorite food stands and order myself a cheap meal. After sitting on a nearby bench, I inhale my food. Damn, I was really hungry. I pick up the small box that sat next to me and studied it for a minute. What, is this some sort of proposal strategy? I chuckled to myself before opening the small box. Why is there a tooth? A shiver shoots on my back, realizing it's a real human tooth. I notice a small folded note as well. What is this? They won't bother you anymore, little fern. Huh! Sawyer is easily my favorite, uh, Yan Yan now. <laughs> Maybe not my favorite Yandere just yet. I mean, like, like he, he gets points for, kick, like, beating the heck out of that butthole. But still, still, let's go back and finish up the last two endings, shall we? Okay, this time when he asked me whether I wanted him to, like, get me some food, I'll just tell him, yeah, that sounds nice. All right, let's go. He smiles brightly at me and leads me the way as we walk over to the stands. The area isn't too busy, surprisingly. There's a few scattered groups sitting around the picnic benches. The lines are fairly short, so that isn't swaying my choice at least. I look over at my options and spot one that I'm definitely in the mood for. That one! I point to the one I chose, but hear no confirmation. Curious, I turn to Sawyer. My eyes immediately meet his. He looks almost zoned out, but directly at me. Deep eyes with the light glistening off of them. Hello? My dude? I'm sorry. That one? I look to where he's gesturing. He got it right, but before I could confirm anything, he pulls me to his face again. I made his eyes again, this time a bit more forcibly. Do you mind if I tell you something? You don't deserve to be hurt like that, you know? The amount of times he grabbed you like they owned you, the glint in his eyes is off, but this isn't the same gentle expression he usually has. How does he know about... Every time I saw them do that to you, I want to rip their throat out. What's happening? He reaches his arms out and takes my hand into his. He'll never touch you again. He'll never speak another word to you. He... What? Suddenly, he pulls me into a hug. His embrace is so warm and loving. Really? All he wants is to hurt the people that hurt me? I see. Ah. Gosh darn. Did you accept the hug? How do you react to his intentions? You get to decide what happens. Explore the mediums of telling the story you make of him. Wait. Oh. Okay, you know what? Uh, I'll get back to my realization later, okay? But for now, let's get back to the final ending and then we'll get into this, okay? Okay, we're at the final choice where we're supposed to decide whether we go home with Sawyer or we tell him that he's a murderer. We are going to tell him that, okay, yeah, sure. As long as I'm safe. I place my hand against his, press it into my cheek more. Yeah. Okay. Sara leans in and touches his forehead to mine, shutting his eyes. He seems a little giddy, but tries to keep it toned down. I notice through his little fidgets. You know, despite everything he's said, he hasn't done anything to me. He hasn't been pushy or un uncomfortable to be around. Maybe that's why this somehow feels okay. Let's get you some food, and then we can start a big adventure. He keeps my hand in his as he moves it from my cheek down to his side. Gently, he starts to tug me towards the stands. This might not be so bad. I mean, he really is sweet and caring. Plus, he got rid of that toxic butthole. Win-win. Ending 4. What happens next in your journey with Sawyer? Where did you two go? What adventures did you have? You get to decide what happens. Explore the mediums of telling the story you make with him. And most importantly, have fun, little fern. Well, 
that was Lil Fern. What I just realized at the very end of that is that that last line at the end of every ending is basically a call to action for anyone to just come up with fan art or freaking uh, fanfic. Just explore any medium you'd like to actually like tell your own story of Sawyer. And I think I don't really see a lot of VNs call that out specifically. I mean, yeah, like a lot of creators love it whenever they see like someone come up with fan art and such. But like never have I seen someone actually like straight up say, hey, go ahead and make your own stories in the VN itself. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys want to play this for yourself, link to the game is in the description below alongside all the other fun links. I hope you guys have a lovely rest of the day and I'll be seeing you in the next video. This is Lionel signing off. Ciao.